you'll take your Bibles and open up to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Ephesians 3, starting with verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would give you, according to the riches of His glory, power to be strengthened by His Spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to speak to you just for a moment this morning, the whole family. The whole family. Father, again, I thank you so much for this day. I have felt your presence so strong in this house. And I know that you are ministering, that you are helping, that you are guide leading and directing us. And that, Father, your anointing is heavy here today. Again, I just give you all praise and glory. Thank you for the reading of the word. Let it go forth and accomplish great things. And again, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Johnny had been misbehaving and was sent to his room. After a while, he emerged and informed his mother that he had thought it over like she had said, and he had prayed as she had instructed him to. Mother was quite pleased that he had learned his lesson so quickly and had prayed like she had told him to do. She said, Johnny, that's so good. If you ask God to help you not misbehave, he will help you. Johnny looked at her with a little crooked smile and said, Oh, I didn't ask him to help me not misbehave. I asked him to help you put up with me. I think sometimes that's how it goes, isn't it? We ask God sometimes just to put up with us instead of behaving. I know this is traditionally Mother's Day and we do celebrate the mothers, but I felt like that I needed to give a sermon this morning to the family, to the family of God. You are my family. I I have a mother and father, had a mother and father, they're both in heaven. I have brothers and sisters. I have extended family that go with my bloodline. I have daughters that are very important to me. Grandchildren that I love more than my children. Is that possible? Any grandparents in the house? Who knows what I'm talking about? No one wants to raise a hand because they're sitting next to their children. (laughs) But you are my family. Angle Lake Neighborhood Church, you are my family. How many of you believe when I tell you I love you very, very much? How many believe that when I tell you that? I love you. And because of that, I want to take a minute today and just encourage you with a few thoughts on being family. The first thing that I want to talk about as families is that we always need humility and grace. Let's say that together. Humility and grace. And that happens anytime we come together as a family. I know for a fact that the last two plus years have been a struggle for the church. Our guy that does the statistics, Barna, came out recently and asking pastors during COVID, during the end of COVID, how many considered resigning at the end of the the COVID period when when things started to die down. I was shocked to see that 60% of pastors nationwide considered resigning. 60%. The top reason was COVID. 
A close second was political unrest in the church. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. I don't know what your political persuasion is today, but how about let's be the children of God? How about let's be the kingdom of God? How about let's promote the things of God? How about let Jesus come and wash our hearts and make us whole? How about let's put aside our differences for a while and put our sights on seeing what God can do? How many of you have been blessed by the feeling that you got in the house today? Has the Spirit of God been heavy in this place today? Let us put aside some of the things that in my mind are so small, so tiny, not even significant really. But we get so tied up in what we believe is right that we'll fight to the death. What we need today is humility and grace. Say it with me again. Humility and grace. My first point, if you're taking notes, is family humility. Family humility. James 4, 6 says this. But he gives more grace. Let let me ask this question. Anybody in the house today need more grace? Anyone need more grace? Any, Any husbands need more grace? Any wives need more grace? Any parents need more grace? How about any children that need more grace? Any employees in the building that need more grace? Any employers in the building that need more grace? He gives more grace for this reason it is said, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to who? To the humble. Only as we humble ourselves before the Lord will we be in a position to receive anything from him. If we want to be in a position that God will hear us, we must humble ourselves and know that it is by grace that we walk together. How is it possible that people from different parts of the world can come together and worship Him in one accord? And that that one accord being the love of Jesus Christ, which surpasses all understanding. Does it matter in the house where we come from as long as Jesus is the primary source of who we are? Does it matter what color our skin is? Does it matter what political party we try to support? Does it really matter in life the things that we see that separate us so often and so much? What is it on the inside that will find expression on the outside must be a people that humble themselves before God and say that, Lord God, I need you. Instead of being angry, who believes we need to be driven to our knees? Instead of being dogmatic, who believes we need to listen and have an open heart just to hear what's going on? I'm not saying you have to agree. I'm not even saying that you have to say it's right. But how about let's have grace and mercy and humble ourselves to at least listen I, 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 wanna, I, tell, I have to tell parents this all the time. Listen, <laughs> listen, if you have a teenager, anybody have teenagers in the house this morning? Maybe not many, if, a couple. If you have teenagers in the house today, they have a hard time expressing what they're thinking. It's just a fact. You can ask them a question and they'll tell you something and it doesn't even sound, you can't even connect the dots. Because they have a hard time expressing exactly what it is that's going on in their mind and in their body. And the absolute worst thing that you can do is look at a teenager and go, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Anybody guilty of that? Hear me. Hear me. It just might be the dumbest thing you've ever heard. But don't you dare tell that teenager that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Who hears what I'm saying? Instead of being angry, instead of thinking I have to be right all the time, who believes that humility will cover a multitude of sins? Who believes if we can pray for one another and encourage one another, that that will do more than all the anger and frustration and being upset that the world can offer? I want us to be driven to our knees this morning. Let me encourage you. Find time to pray. Who in the house is praying enough? Who in the house is praying enough? Who believes we need to pray more? 
Who believes we need to seek the face of God more? Who believes we need to say yes to God and no to all the foolishness that we see going on around us? Who believes we need to put our hope and trust? We sang it. Did we not sing it this morning? Did you sing, I put my hope and trust in the living Savior? Did you sing those words? Who now is going to put it into action? It is time to pray. As a family here and as a family in your home. We should be praying as a church and we should be praying as families. Prayer should be the most important ministry you do, whether it's here at church or whether it is at home. Why is humility important? If you have a hard time humbling yourselves before God, how do we ever expect to humble ourselves before others and even those within our family? There's such struggle that goes on in families today. Not just the church family, but in our, in our nuclear families. There's such struggle. And a lot of that comes from being, not being able to humble ourselves and listen to what's going on around us. Who believes we need to be slow to speak? Slow to anger and quick to listen. 1 Peter 3 eight says, Finally, be of, all, be of one mind, be loving towards one another, be gracious and be kind. If you don't have that underlined in your Bible, take it and underline it with a big red pen. Let me read it again. Finally, be all of one mind, be loving toward one another, be gracious and be kind. If we're going to live the kind of life that God expects, expects us to live, it begins with our relationship with Him, with God, and then to our family. We need to be willing to humble ourselves. Husbands, wives, parents, and children need to learn to submit to each other. And I get it. That's a hard task. But I'm going to tell you right now, until we learn to submit to one another with love and kindness and gentleness, peace, I can't tell you how many times parents will come to me and say, my house is a mess. There's a war going on inside my house, and I'm no longer in charge. If you're here this morning and that is you, don't bring your children to me and say, fix my children. I can't fix them. What I can do is give you some tools to help you gain control of your house back. And here's the first thing. Put Jesus first in everything. Pray. Ask God. Who believes God? If God, can, if God can part the Red Sea, who believes he can make Johnny behave? Who believes? Who believes? If God can do the miracles he said he does, who believes he can change my heart? Who believes he can take a hard heart and, and break it down and make it pliable so that he can use that person for his glory? And to get along with other people. I'm amazed at how we can't seem to get along and I'm not talking about Angle Lake Neighborhood Church necessarily, although we've had some struggles in the past. We need to be willing to humble ourselves and submit to each other. My second point is family name. You're keeping notes, family name. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. This morning, we have a greater identity than just a first and last name. My name may be John Kylo, but I tell you the name that I take and hold dear to my, myself is that I'm a child of the Most High God. Jesus is my king. <laughs> Jesus is my Lord. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the one who I put my hope and trust in. Not in my name. I'm proud of who I am, but I am proud of who I am in Christ Jesus more than anything else. With God as our Father, we are all brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. This is what makes it hard sometimes, really, when we get so aggravated or frustrated with one another over things that just don't seem to add up. And yet we forget that we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Within our families, we share a relationship with each other that goes beyond family ties. Our relationship as family will not only last a lifetime, but our relationships as brothers and sisters in Christ will not only last a lifetime here, but it will go to heaven as well, and we will be brothers and sisters forever. Our greatest desire. Listen, 
Han and Mai's greatest desire for our children is that they be present and accounted for when we all get to heaven. Our greatest desire for our grandchildren and for their children and for their children and for their children is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and that they too someday will make heaven. I'm not sure your opinion will matter much when you get to heaven. Listen, as a person who has an uh, undergraduate degree in psychology, I've read tons of psychology books. Who believes that? Tons. I've read almost all of James Dobson's books. He's a Christian psychologist. He tells a story of going to a church where he lived, and, and they had a gymnasium, and he would have a pickup basketball game that he organized every week. A little bit like we go golf. He did basketball once a week. In his travels and in this town, there was a pro basketball player that lived there, and his name was Pete Maravich. He was called Pistol Pete. He could shoot, and he was a great basketball player. They had a pickup game one day, and Pete came. He was newly saved. He hadn't been saved very long. He had just accepted the Lord as his Savior. He was 40 years old. This was sometime in 1988. I can't remember the exact date, but sometime in 1988. And as they were going down the court, at 40 years old, Pistol Pete Maravich had a massive heart attack and killed over. James Dobson ran to him, and as he was holding him in his arms, Pete looked up and said, Make sure my children know Jesus. And went to glory. He passed on to glory in Dr. Dobson's arms. I listened to Dr. Dobson as he said, Man, at that time, all my opinions went right out the window. All the stuff that I would argue and debate about were gone. All the issues of life that seemed so heavy and so hard suddenly seemed so light in comparison to what had just happened. He said, yes, I'm going to tell Pete Merritt's children about Jesus, but I wanted to go home first and make sure my children knew that there was a God in heaven. I was so moved by that story. At the time, my children were misbehaving. I know it's hard to believe. Our children were misbehaving. Oh, I was so frustrated. I was so upset. Man, I had all kinds of... Who believes the pastor had all kinds of opinions? By goodness, I was going to make them love Jesus. When I heard that story, it all flew out the window. All, all my opinions, all the things I was going to do, all the things that I wanted to accomplish were gone. I brought those two girls and I put them in the kitchen. I looked them straight in the face and I said, forget everything. Don't leave this world without Jesus Christ. Do not leave this world without Jesus Christ. Know Jesus. Who believes knowing Jesus is the most important thing that we can do? If you believe that, give the Lord a clap offering and praise. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see any family member left behind. Now listen to me very carefully. That includes my church family as well. And your family. Now I know that there are some here that have loved ones that are not saved. I know. You have family members that do not know Jesus. Rest assured, Angle Lake Neighborhood Church is praying for your family. And we're praying that God will radically transform and save lives. Our greatest desire is not to see any family members left behind or excluded from God's family. I want my family to share Jesus' family name. Listen, we may all have different last names, but how many of us want to be known as in Christ. Anybody here want to be known as in Christ? 
I want to be known as in Christ. My third point this morning is family provision. It's not unusual for children to desire to be paid for doing their chores. <laughs> I, I always found this to be really strange. Kids, I want an allowance. I want to get paid for doing the things that I should be doing anyway. I heard a little girl once say one time that she was responsible to clean her room, but that she just didn't get paid for it, and she thought that was so unfair. I don't get paid for cleaning my room, yet I'm responsible to make sure that it's clean. I told her, you do get paid. How's that, Pastor? You have a room, don't you? You have a bed to sleep in, don't you? You have food to eat, right? Do you have clothes to wear? Your clothes get washed? If you're sick, do you get to see a doctor? Who believes she's getting paid? James 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. Who believes God has our best interest at heart? Man, please, please, please. Don't ever ex say that you expect God to give you something because you've earned it. How many know that we don't earn anything when it comes to our salvation? Christ gave of himself freely. He took away my sinfulness and clothed me in his righteousness. I am saved because of the blood of the Lamb. I am right before God because of what He's done for me. I believe that He's called Jehovah Jireh because He's my provider. I believe that He will meet all my needs. Not necessarily in the way we think He should. I had a pastor friend one time that I love telling this story because it just really shows the picture. That they were needing help. They needed help. Finances. In his mind, they needed money. And he would pray to God every day for money. And he would go out to his mailbox every day expecting to get a check for money and never got it. He was so disappointed. Yet at the same time, people from the church were bringing to his back door food and clothing and, and uh, everything they needed as a family. Not just, not just food, but they had uh, the items that they would need to keep themselves and he finally realized that God was truly taking care of them. He was just not doing it in the way that he thought it should be done. Who believes God will take care of you? God will take care of you. And I'm telling you right now, he will do it, but not always in the way that we think he should. Perhaps an even greater thought is that beyond meeting our physical needs, God will also meet our spiritual needs. Ephesians 3.16, that he would give you according to the riches of his glory, power to be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. There is nothing that is more precious than having our inner man needed or taken care of. If at no other time in the history of the world, families need spiritual help, who believes this today? Who believes that the family is coming under attack at an alarming rate in this country today, really around the world? There are spiritual riches available to those who love Jesus that will keep us from being bankrupt by sin, pulling down by despair, overrun by the world around us, and strengthened to be overcomers by the blood and the power of Jesus Christ. I asked someone this morning how they were doing. I got one response was, the other one was, fantastic. I said, hey, that's really good. I like that. I t I've gotten to the point where I'm going to stop. People ask me how I'm doing. I want to stop saying I'm just getting by. Who believes we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus? I want, to, I want to do more than just get by. Who believes God is an abundant God? Who believes he will do exceedingly abundantly more than I am able to? He's exceedingly abundantly more than able to do even things I can even imagine or think about. And I have a great imagination. Who believes, though, that the power of God is able to keep us and provide for us? And my next point is family home, if you're taking notes. Family home. Ephesians 3.17, And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I've already told you this, but 
Let me ask you this. Who believes God is here this morning? God is here this morning. Not because we put a sign up that says Angle Lake Neighborhood Church. Not because we designate this place as church. He's here this morning because He's in our hearts and His Word says that He walks among the churches. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, and that you are not your own? You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God lives in you. Let me ask you this this morning. Have you welcomed God into your heart? Have you made your heart an uncomfortable place for God to live? Have you pushed God out of the, the residence He has chosen for Himself? Notice what Paul says next to the Corinthians. You are, you are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. We've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. We don't belong to ourselves to live any way we want. We belong to God. Welcome to God home. Honor God with all that you have. Let him be a place in your life today. John 14, 23 says, and Jesus answered him, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. What is a spiritual, what is the spiritual climate within your house? I hope that the spiritual climate here at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church is good. Who would confess? Do I have a witness? Is the spiritual climate at Angle Lake Neighborhood Church good? Do we allow the Spirit of God to move? Do we listen to God speak? I hope so. What, but let me ask you this. What's the spiritual climate like within your home? Listen, this is most important. You see, if your spiritual climate in your home is going to be like it is in church, then there has to be the same attitude that is at home, that is in the church. I absolutely love Proverbs 22, 6. All right, Bible scholars, who can, who can tell me? Train up, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they get older, they will not depart from that. I absolutely love that scripture. And it doesn't say anywhere in there, force your children to love Jesus. It doesn't say, make them go to church and raise their hands and speak in tongues doesn't say that. It says what? Train them up. Provide an atmosphere in your home where the presence of God is invited to come in and be there. Let the Bible be read. Let prayers be prayed. Let the Spirit of God be active inside your home. Your children will then know that God is real. And if they know that God is real, how in the world will they ever be able to walk away from Him? Hear me. They, listen, they may not always live for Jesus. They may go sideways sometimes. But they'll never deny God because they've seen His hand in action. Who hears what I'm saying? And at some point, I believe that those children will come back to Jesus. I believe that. Why? Because the Bible tells me that. Provide a home. You say, Pastor, I didn't quite do that when my children are at home. What can I do to fix it? Make your home like that now. Well, my children don't live there. They might come and visit. Make your home a place where God dwells. Make your home a place where the atmosphere is full of the Spirit of God. Let the Bible be read. Let prayers be prayed. Let music go forth. Let the sound of glory shine in the house. And watch and see what God can do. I was sharing with someone this morning that we're praying for someone who needs Jesus desperately. And the ideal came up that this person is a hard person to reach. And I can remember very vividly when we were in Oakville. One morning we were doing service and we hadn't even got to the sermon yet. We were doing, we'd like to do, we pre, like we do prayer time here. We did prayer time there, except we invited people to come forward sometimes. And when I came down and I said, if you're here this morning... And you just need a touch from God. Would you come down? A lady got up and ran down to the altar. Ran down to Han and I. She looked us in the face. She says, I need Jesus desperately. 
I said, what's going on? She said, my daughter got saved a year ago, and I've been watching her like a hawk for a whole year, and her life has completely been transformed and changed. I need that in my life. Before we ever spoke a word of the sermon, we prayed for her and led her to Jesus, and she got saved right there before the start of this sermon ever happened. Somebody shout amen. amen. After the ser- I didn't know her. I didn't know her. Never seen her before. After the service, I had people coming to me going, do you know who that is? You'll have to enlighten me. I don't know who that is. That's Annie Holman. You're going to have to elaborate a little bit. eh? Man, you talk about the worst person in the world being a 10. Annie's a strong 9. I went, no. Look, this, this sweet little lady. There's no, 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 you don't know. She's had a rough life. She's been around a lot of toughness. And she is hard. I said she was just here crying. Who believes God can take the hardest person in the world and transform their hearts? Who, believe, who believes that God can save the vilest sinner? If you do, give the Lord a clap off and a praise in the house this morning. If you're praying for a loved one this morning, know this. They can be saved. Make your home a place of prayer. The next point is family integrity. Ephesians 3, 17 and 9 through 19, being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Our integrity, our character as a family is based upon one word, love. Look again at what Paul has prayed for. He's asked that we would be rooted and established in love. Why does Paul pray this? Why should we make it our prayer that our family be rooted and established in love? It is as if love finds its full expression in God and to God and the people around us as we can grasp how great Christ's love is for us. Who believes love is a verb? Who believes love is active? 1 Corinthians 13, 4, the love chapter. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love flaunts not itself and is not puffed up. Does not behave itself improperly, seeks not its own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not, excuse me, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And everybody shout it with me. Love never fails. One more time. Love never fails. Love gives us integrity. Because love never fails. How many of you know here this morning that no family is perfect? (laughs) There's a few hands going. Let me make this statement. Who believes we all make mistakes? Got a few more hands on that one. Show me a family that loves each other with a love that goes beyond comprehension. And I will show you a family with integrity, not perfect, not the one that doesn't make mistakes, but it'll be a family full of integrity, a family you can trust. Look at Paul's prayer again in Ephesians 3, 19, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. It is through our love for each other, an act of love that goes beyond our feelings, a love that surpasses knowledge. Through love, we are filled with the fullness of God. You are never more like God than when you love each other. Can you imagine the heartbreak it is to God when He looks down upon His children and He has told us, He's commanded us, He has said, Love one another with a love and cords of love that cannot be broken. And yet we get into arguments over who should be in office. Who should be leading a political party over the things? Who should get this and who should get that? I wonder sometimes if God is not just frustrated. I, I'm not sure if God can get frustrated, but who believes God might get frustrated sometimes? When he says, instead of arguing with each other, how about loving one another? How about praying for one another? How about encouraging one another? Talked to a pastor in Michigan this week. And he says, I've 
not met a pastor yet after two years that isn't completely worn out. Worn out. And I would imagine that just doesn't go for pastors. I would imagine that. Anybody here worn out over the last two years? Just worn out? Who believes God will give us a supernatural strength to go on? Listen, I'm not ready to quit. God has not told me it's time to go. Anybody else? Anybody else ready to, to put, all, put aside the things that just hinder us and hold us back and be the people that are, that are bound with cords that can't be broken and worship a living God? Who wants to be part of the kingdom of God? Instead of a political party, who wants to say Jesus is king? Jesus is king. Let's say it together. Jesus is king. Let him be the king of my life. Let him be the king of what's going on in my heart and, my, and everything that I'm doing. I'll follow after him. It is through our love for each other, an act of love that goes beyond our feelings, a love that surpasses knowledge. Through love, we are filled with the fullness of God. 1 Peter 4 8 says, Above all things, have unfailing love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. It is love that will hold us together and keep our families from being divided. It is love that will strengthen a family to stick together no matter what. No family is perfect, no love cover, uh, but love covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> Many years ago, when I was just a teenage boy, my father was fighting desperately to keep his family together. And we had plugged into a Church of God with Cleveland, Tennessee Church in Pasadena, Texas. Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee is almost identical to the Assemblies of God. Just a little bit of difference, but not much. I was so in rebellion that it wasn't even funny. I just was, I had, a, I had a, anybody ever seen a teenager with an attitude? I was one of those guys, I had a tude. And my father was going, join the youth group, do something with the youth group. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with those guys. I got my buds, well, I'll hang out with them. Youth pastor invited me to go and be a part of a football game. They were having one Sunday afternoon after church. In Texas, in the summer times, we didn't wear shoes. So I played football in my bare feet. And I was a pretty good football player, could run pretty good. Guy threw me a pass, and I was going into the end zone to score a touchdown when I stubbed my big toe and was in so much pain, I just rolled into the end zone, scored a touchdown, rolled into the end zone, scored a touchdown. But I grabbed hold of my foot, and the things that came out of my mouth were horrible. It was not good. You would think a teenager didn't know language like that. But I had been trained well in school. Suddenly, one of the youth workers looked at me as I was sitting on the ground with all those profanities coming out of my mouth. And he looked to the youth pastor and he goes, Isn't that Brother Kylo's kid? My dad hadn't done a thing but work hard at trying to keep his family together. You see, I didn't disrespect myself that day. Who did I disrespect? My dad. My father. Because you see, I was identified to him. I'll go to my grave remembering that lesson. I had disrespected my father. Let us be careful of the things that come out of our mouth. Let us be careful of our opinions. Let us be careful of our thoughts. Let us be careful of those things that we hold so tight that nobody can get to us. Oh, listen, I'm not saying don't be involved. Be involved all you want to be. Be involved. In fact, you should be. But when we come together as the body of Christ, who believes we need to come together with humility? And grace 
and love and care and kindness and support and encouragement, praying for one another, being the people that God has called us to be, not this or that, but children of the Most High God. Jesus is my King, and I belong to the kingdom of God. Anybody here belong to the kingdom of God? I know I've gone a little longer than I planned to, and I apologize to the mothers. I'm sure that the reservations at the dinner houses will hold for you. If there's a team that's going to come back and do the music, please come back. How many believe that God does not want the family of God to be divided? Oh, let me see a hand. God does not want to see the family of God divided. Who believes that God doesn't want our nuclear families divided as well? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. The sky is the limit for families. God can and will do more than we can even imagine. Let me, let me ask this real quick. Every head bowed just for a moment, every eye closed. Pastor, I have a family member that needs Jesus desperately. I'm praying for them. Would you raise a hand? I want to see. I have a family member that desperately needs Jesus. Desperately needs Jesus. I'm praying for them. Father, I pray over every hand that's risen in this house right now. Family members, family members that are lost, family members that are broken, family members that are separated from you, family members who need Jesus desperately. Would you reach out a loving hand and save them right this very moment? I pray, believe, and you'll draw them in, draw them in, draw them in, draw them in. And then bind them with cords that cannot be broken. There is nothing impossible with you. Again, with every head bowed and every eye closed. Pastor, I have had a struggle with my church family. I'm a little frustrated. I've been offended. I've let somebody's words pull me down. I've let somebody's thoughts interfere with my life. I want to be set free this morning from the feelings that I'm feeling. If that's you, would you raise a hand? No one looking around. Just raise a hand. I'm, yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? I'm struggling with church family. Father, I pray for every one of those hands that are raised, Lord God, that are struggling with church family. I pray, God, deliver us and set us free this morning. Help us to be the people that you've called us to be, Father Lord. Not struggling in our Walk, follow the Lord, with what the world says or trying to be important to what man says or trying to be uh, plugged into what everyone else believes we should be doing. But, Father, we should be listening to your word and following after your word to be people of your word. Bind us together, I pray. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Everybody can look up at me at this time. says, as a family... Let us know that God has big things planned for us. Ask for the impossible. And then let us watch as God answers our prayers in greater ways than you could even imagine. Do you know Jesus today? Do you know him? I mean, do you know him? Not a partial know him, not a I think I know him, but do you know him? If you do, don't leave this place without finding a relationship with the living God. Let's stand together if we might this morning.